What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. Boy, what a fight card it is going to be. U UFC No Chase September 14th at the Sphere. That is going to be the big venue. Uh, and this man is in the main event. He is challenging Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean O'Malley, the Bantamweight Championship uh, champion for the championship. Of course, I'm talking about Marab Dvalishvili. I even pronounced your name correctly, and that's a good Very one. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Marab, uh, how are you? And uh, just uh, this far off, first of all, let's start with how was the cut on the eye? Is it all healed up? It's all good. It's healed up, and uh, it's, it's all good, man. You had a win over um, Peter Yawn a week after John Jones last fought when he won the heavyweight championship. We've talked a lot about how John Jones hasn't fought since. That's when you became basically the number one contender for the title 18 months ago. Does it feel like a long way to get your chance at the championship? I know your friend Al Aljo was the uh, champion at the time, but that's that's a long time to go waiting for this belt. How hungry are you right now? You, you are right. It's been a long time I was waiting for, and especially I like to be busy, and I don't have a problem with weight. I don't have a problem to make weight. You know, I can make weight every. I mean, you guys see after my fight, I was, I was, I make same weight three weeks later. So, when I was backup fighter, and uh, but it's okay. Uh, now it's perfect time. It, 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 it worth it to wait all this time, and now ready to go. Rob, I wonder, I want to ask you about the inactivity, if it hurt you in this way. You know, you fought when you fought Peter Yawn, that was a brilliant performance, and he is known as a great striker. Uh, and yet I thought you got hit some, some cleaner shots by Henry Cejudo, who is a wrestler, not necessarily a striker, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that that was because of inactivity? And do, would you attribute it to, you know, you were, what was it, nine or ten months between those two fights, uh, the fact that you got caught by Cejudo more than by Yawn? No, no. Uh, so it's a fight, and that's why you know you never know. Like um, so, Belal Muhammad, he's a great grappler, and he 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 knock out uh, Sean Brady. You know, it's you know in Metzera, he knock out uh, GSP. You know, you know we all fighter, and then you never know. It's a it's a fight, and uh, um, anything can happen. You know. Like Bislam Mahachev, he's a great striker, but he got knocked down somebody else. He's not even UFC anymore. So right. you know, it, it's it's we got clipped. You know, it's it's a fight. <laughs> That's what we are ready for. You know, it's it's normal, normal. And sometimes, yeah, when you're not accepting get punched, that's that's where it comes. You know, it's like that's how it's usually works. And that's why it's a fight. That's why it's interesting. And that's why we all watch. A lot of people will talk about your cardio, and of course it's fantastic. I mean, I don't know that there's anybody who can go as long as you can for as hard as you can, right? But in some ways, it almost seems like people are giving you a backhanded compliment because they say Morab is going to win by odd cardio, and, and it's almost like they're ignoring the other parts of your game. Do you kind of feel like people sleep on how good you are in other aspects of, of MMA other than just being in unbelievable condition? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, lots of MMA fans um... – I think very casual, and um, they they don't. I mean, if if they not watching MMA very close, or if they not training before or something, they just say things. And um, uh, uh, yeah, so like I don't know. Like I mean, some people say that, some people say that, but um, thing is. Like I'm number one contender. I'm fighting for the belt, and um, I'm good everywhere. And even striking when I need to strike, I beat Josie Aldo, and uh, I wasn't able to take him down, and I beat him. So, right. And uh, that means I can strike too. Even maybe it was boring because of not because of me. That Josie Aldo was acting smart, and he wasn't. He was he was backing up. You know, even even I have all the respect for him. That's how it works, you know. O'Malley o seems to me, you know, in his striking maybe a little different because he's so accurate and he's so quick with his hands. How, how do you counteract that? Is it is pressure what counteracts that? Yeah, O'Malley is uh, for sure a good striker. Uh, he, 
we all see against Aljo, he was just running, running around. He was waiting for his moment. He lost first round, and then he used his chance, throw his um, uh, right hand. Um, yeah, he's smart, and uh, he, his footwork is good. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's it's gonna. It's gonna affect me in you know, his style. I think um, I will break him. I will catch him, and I will break him. Marab, you know, uh, I think Aljo might have been the biggest bantamweight I've ever seen. I mean, I think he could have fought at, at lightweight at that time and 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 been equal size with some of those guys, right? So I'm sure you have some behind the scenes knowledge. How difficult was it on Aljo as he got ready to fight O'Malley? to get into the kind of shape he wanted, given what he had to do to his body to make 135 pounds. Yes, I agree with you. Aljo was very tired to make weight, uh, and he was very busy. I think he fought like 13 months three times and for the five rounds. And then um, he was, he was going to take big, big, Big off after the after he beat Henry Cejudo, he was gonna take a long time off, and uh, but uh, they 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 push him and uh, he has to come he has to come back in a couple months and uh, he was just tired he wasn't like mentally there that, that's how I see you know like I think um, he was rushing you know he was. Mike, we lost your mic. Can you there? He was he was gonna take uh, off after Henry Sabuto's fight, but um, uh, UFC offered this fight, O'Malley fight, and he has to rush and come back quick. And uh, yeah, he wasn't mentally like there. He, he wants to just finish this fight and go big vacation. And uh, the, yeah, so unfortunately it doesn't work for him, but uh, now we learn and we move on. I, I want to uh, wrap with this. I want to, you know, everybody's a tough guy on the internet. You know, we all get it, right? If you're in the public eye at all. But you had an interesting thing. I, I like to see, uh, at the, I think it was the Craig Jones Invitational you were at, that uh, we saw you uh, leave the floor and go up into the stands at T-Mobile Arena and and somebody apparently was giving you a hard time, right? And so now all of a sudden, here comes a potential world champion fighter. What was the guy saying? And when you got up near him, what did he say to you then? So I was there watching jujitsu, enjoying. Um, and the only one guy, of course, he was uh, screaming uh, from the uh, fans. Mera, Sean is your daddy. Sean is your daddy. And I look to, I turn around and I look to him in the eyes and I'm like, shut up. And and then he was keep laughing at me and he was pointing at me and he was keep continue. And I, I tell him, shut up, bitch. And, uh, and he was keep going. And I tell him, come here and say to my face. <laughs> and he was keep going. You know, I give him three warning, like to, Calm down, like now you're talking to me, you're not like you're not, it's not internet or it's not like you are, you are talking to me as a man and man. And uh, you have, if you, if you say something, you mean it, right? And then you have to, you, you got a responsibility. And he was just joking with, with, with I guess, with his one friend or something. And he, he was disrespect me with, with these people. And I'm here and like everybody respects me. And this guy, only one, I'm not going to let him disrespect me. And then, uh, I said again. I tell him, "Come here, or I'm gonna come." And he, of course, he's not coming. He was keep laughing, and I, I had to go. And then, when and I what did he say when he walked up there? So yeah, I was just okay. Like, and then, oh yeah, I, I tell him, I tell him to yeah, to tell tell me now. And of course, he was like, "No, no, no, no." He was like, "Now, no." Like, I I tell you before, like three or four times, like to to shut up to yeah. be. To be, you know, to be humble, and he was just kidding. now, yeah. And then, of course, like I don't want to like hurt him or you know, like even he was stupid. But I, I did bully him, 
and uh, I did uh, <laughs> I did one you know and then I guess and just just happened like this and uh, it, it's I guess the people because it's so why people I, if you see the video people are already filming because it was going on like conversation you know, I was he was yelling at me and I was yelling back and you know it was back and forth and then when I started working it was already people already have a video on because uh, because it was like big things people only saw that when I walk but why I walk because he, this guy was disrespecting me and uh, not such a tough guy when there wasn't a big wall in between you and him so yeah, hey i know so you gotta run we got a, a lot of people want to interview you so let me ask you one last question and it's i want to congratulate you on becoming an american citizen uh that was an, a great you. accomplishment for you uh what does it mean to you to you're now a dual citizen in the united states and georgia what did it mean to you to get your uh, american citizenship I'm grateful to live in here in the U.S. This is beautiful country, uh, free country, and um, you know, I'm. A, I think I'm. A, I'm. I am just example. Example like American dream. You know, if you come here, if you work hard, if you, if you good citizen, and if you don't do any criminal or any bad things, you you will come successful, and you you can, you can just. Do good things and change your life and change your family lives, um, and I'm example. Of this you know hard work pays off here, and uh, of course mean uh, means uh, a lot for me and for like you know um, you know this it was big dream. It takes me 12 years to come U.S. citizen, wow. and uh, yeah, I'm grateful, grateful for this country, and. Uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna continue to do good things, and um, you know, like um, yeah. And the, the I'm gonna joke now, like so. Now I have a U.S. passport, and then the people like this, um, uh, the the trolls, I can now I'm not scared of bully them back. You know, if I have to, I can smack their face, and nobody will deport me from the United States. So. I'm well, I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to say because uh, you're fighting at the sphere, you're going to try to get a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen, I do want to become Mexican citizen. I will come. I will come. You guys will see. I do want, but uh, you know. But listen, I I live in here, United States, um, like more than twelve years already, and uh, like I said, I'm grateful, and um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to do great good things here. UFC Noche on September 14th at the Sphere. Marab Dvalish really against Sean O'Malley in the main event. Marab, best of luck to you, my friend. Thank you for Thank your time. You. Thank you. Of course, yeah. my pleasure. Thank you, sir.